For me, the biggest thing when I really made my biggest personal development changes was surrounding myself with the right environment for me to kind of biohack myself and the right people and the right content. So whether it be there's podcasts that I really like and I listen to every morning, the mindset mentor is one that I I recommend a friend uh, by a friend named Rob. He's a, he's a a brilliant speaker communicator and he really gets you motivated. A couple of tools that I use. Um, My Alexa right next to my bed is programmed to wake up and basically talk crap to me for the first two minutes. It goes through like a really, you know, I'm not going to use profanity on your podcast. I'll do it on mine, but sure. yeah, she'll go through and she'll say things that I programmed her to say to me that I know are going to trigger me and to, to get up and do the right thing. Jay, you're an osteopathic doctor, founder of Otter PR, Rex Home Gym, and Instalight Man, and so much more. Thank you so much for your time, man. I appreciate it. No, nah, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. Happy to give back to your audience any way that I can. Uh, thank you, man. And I love to start off by going back a bit. Where did you grow up? What was childhood like for you? I had a pretty interesting childhood. So I was born in Syracuse, New York. My parents got me out of there when I was one. Thank, okay. thank God for that. <laughs> uh, I was raised in South Florida, you know, suburban home and actually grew up in a pretty interesting uh, situation. My mom was stay at home and her hobby was raising animals. So we had 110 animals living on our little like suburban house growing up. Oh my so kind of formed me into this like animal loving person. <laughs> yeah. But that was uh, pretty much my childhood upbringing. Went to University of Florida for college, played competitive volleyball my whole life. That was okay. kind of my thing for a long time. Played professionally on the beach, played for, for my uh, men's team in college. And then went to medical school up in New York. And after that, did a year of training. And now I'm here doing business full time. Never been happier in my life. Come on. Uh, who, did you, who influenced you to go into the medical field and do this whole entrepreneurship thing too? So I'm a first generation entrepreneur. I've got no okay. other entrepreneurs in my family. So wow. the whole pressure growing up was be a doctor. Okay. You know, you'll have an awesome lifestyle. Go be a plastic surgeon. And you know, you got, it made sense, right? You, you yeah. go make a lot of money and study your butt off and eventually it'll pay off. And about halfway into my medical training, I realized doctors are not happy. So I'm going to figure out a way to use it to to be happy. And I I lived with uh, the president of entrepreneurship at Florida State University while in college. And he really is the one who sparked my interest in business. And I took a gap year between um, graduating college and medical school. And at that point, I started my first business and just fell in love with it, realized I was actually good at it, uh, made made a bunch of money. And that's, you know, when I when I caught the fever, started two more businesses through medical school. And here we are today. Come on. That's awesome. And I mean, I got to ask this, but as uh, this Corona thing has really changed the way people are living. And I've seen people wear from like the heavy duty mask to just the bandanas to a lady up here having a, like a sheet bag, plastic bag over her head walking around. But it's like, you know, the, as a doctor, does everyone need to be wearing masks still out in public or, or do these face shields and cloth things still work even? So as a doctor, the, the best thing that we can do is listen to the data out there. And yeah. w- regardless of what my opinion is, my, my yeah. personal opinion, sure. I, I, I can't go speculating. The, the yeah. data right now says wear a mask. And honestly, it's such a non-invasive, I don't want to, not even a procedure. It's not a non-invasive thing to do. It doesn't, yeah. It's not going to negatively affect you. It's not like taking a pill. Right. You're just putting a cloth over your face. And if that's going to change the rate of spread of COVID, I think everybody should do it. Yep. I wear a mask when I'm in public for not only for everyone else to feel okay, but for me to feel okay. And I had COVID. Chances oh, are, yeah. I did. I, I actually wow. suffered pretty, pretty badly for two weeks. I was bedridden. I had all the traditional symptoms. I got pneumonia. Oh my gosh. So medicine says I should be immune and I probably won't be able to contract it and spread it. Yes, that, that's a whole conversation about, <laughs> yes, you can get it twice and spread it again. But oh, wow. yeah, uh, but you know, I, I still wear it. It's, it's yeah. super non-invasive. It's super easy. I don't enjoy wearing them. I hate them. Yeah. I think they destroy human connection and they do a whole lot of other harm. Totally. And you can't go to a bar and wear them and the, all, all the rules people are trying to figure out to navigate the situation. Like you're going to walk into a restaurant, put it on for 30 seconds till you get to your table and turn it off. Yeah. And take it off. It's, you know, just wear the masks until we know, know better. Right. And, you know, in the next year we should have more solutions, whether that be herd immunity or vaccines. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you're the founder of Otter PR, uh, which is the number one rated PR firm. It, you have a huge team over there doing some really awesome things, but how did PR or Otter PR get started? And, you know, how have you been able to make it so successful? Sure. Um, so I've been in digital marketing for a while, like most entrepreneurs start with. Yeah. And PR is a little facet of marketing that I found super interesting because 
as a thought leader, you know, doing what we're doing, creating content, I always like to mentor and coach others. Becoming a thought leader was always interesting to me in terms of how you're going to gain credibility and respect, uh, generate more traffic and build a community. And PR was always an interesting avenue for that. So I learned how to do it really well for myself after hiring a publicist and having a terrible experience with that publicist, Yeah, as a, as a lot of businesses also start. Uh, so from there, you know, we started offering our services, well, my services very cheap. I was doing the PR campaigns myself for friends, family, and small businesses for like $500 a month, wow. which if you look at our prices now, it doesn't look like that anymore. No, totally. <laughs> just, just to kind of build up my experience, get some testimonials yep. and case studies and learn the business. And we've been innovating in the PR space for a year now in a lot of different ways and there's a lot of misunderstanding with PR and how the media works and we're doing a lot to kind of change that and make it modernized yeah and I think that's uh, what we attribute a lot of our success to okay working with with our and why our clients love us so much and we can take a deeper dive into the specifics we're doing as well if you'd like yeah yeah I'm just curious like you know what's your what's the perfect client for you guys for Otter PR over there so we love working with thought leaders, whether that be uh, someone who's been successful in business and now wants to give back and coach others. We work with you know, uh, self-help coaches, business coaches, leaders, authors, speakers, anybody who really wants to try and build credibility and win in this space. Yeah. That's, that's really where our wheelhouse is. Uh, and that's you know, being their professional podcast book or like what we're doing right now. Although I think you, yeah, you found me through, uh, through Instagram. Yeah. But yeah, getting them on TV. We have several clients who are, you know, CNBC correspondents. One of them's in, in the New York Times every week, and we're able to package them in a certain way and pitch them to our contacts in the media to really give back to their audience. And yeah. so, so thought leaders is really where our wheelhouse is, and the clients that I prefer to work with. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you, and you have a really awesome podcast uh, yourself called the Mentor Collective. You know, for those who don't know about it, you know, what's the show all about? Why did you decide to start that thing? Because I've listened to some of the episodes and, and really enjoy it, man. You're, you're bringing on some awesome guests and really getting some good topics going there. I really appreciate you saying that. So Mentors Collective kind of came out of, I, I've always loved mentorship and respected finding mentors and the right yep. people to guide you along the way. Yeah. And I was setting up weekly calls with people who I thought would be valuable for me to learn from on the various subjects. And this is just me and them talking on the phone, 30 minutes to an hour. And by at the end of these calls, I'm like, that was awesome. That was super valuable. Yeah. I think a lot of people would benefit from hearing that. And that's kind of how it was born. Uh, the Mentors Collective was born out of, you know, me finding my own mentors and realizing a lot of people could, should be learning from these mentors. And it's super easy to do that. And this is the platform to do it on. So I, I you know, I do what I've always been doing is I find people who I respect I find the questions that I want answered for myself and I spend 30 minutes to an hour with them uh, getting as much information as possible and not just for myself, but for others. Cause my, my real passion is helping other people be successful in business and be happy in life. And I, I hope through the podcast, I can help people do that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You're, you're definitely doing that. And for me, even like I selfishly, you know, have this podcast because one, I'm the same way. I want to reach out and connect with people that I want to learn from and things like yourself. And you know, then it's like, Oh, tons more people are going to get impacted from this conversation as well. I'm going to put it out there. And so, yeah, again, I think it's just awesome what you're doing with your show there, but you do mentor so many people through your show and through your brands, but who mentors you? So I've got a bunch of mentors, a lot of which I found through the podcast. Now people are reaching out to me to be on the show. Yeah. And obviously through PR, I meet a lot of really successful people. Right. And they're not just my clients. These, these are my friends. These are people who have had a lot of success in business, had eight, nine figure exits from businesses. Wow. And these are people that you know, I'm fortunate enough that they want to come and speak with me, not only for you know, access to my channels, but they're, they're the same as me. They, they're passionate about giving back and helping the next generation of entrepreneur. Yep. So my, you know, my access to them is, is not limited. It, it's been an amazing thing in terms of how many people I've been able to interact with and network with over this past year, really mostly through PR and through the podcast. But yeah. you know, for anyone who's looking for a mentor, there's a ton of great groups out there. I'm part of the Launch Coalition. Uh, that's one nice. uh, guy, guy I spoke to yesterday. His name is, name's Mike. Just an absolute awesome guy that connected me with a whole other entrepreneurship group. 60 plus these guys have all had eight nine figure exits and it's just it's been a whirlwind and the longer you stay in the game the more people you meet yeah absolutely absolutely now, i personally went through this fitness journey earlier this year i i lost 25 pounds i'm sitting at you know that still 
but you are the founder of Rex Home Gym. It fits underneath your bed. This thing looks totally awesome. Well, you know, how's that going? I think you guys just launched that, right? Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. And congratulations on the weight loss. That's huge. That's, that's something to be super proud of. Thank you. Rex Fitness, yeah, it's a, it's a home gym. And obviously in the pandemic right now, gym shut down. And gym's a super high risk place to be. I mean, I'm, I'm still going. I had it. Uh, but a lot of people who are at health risk should probably avoid the gym if, if you know, they don't want to catch COVID. It's just impossible to spread, uh, protect from the spread and everything people are touching yep. and crossing paths. So that's really where the idea sprang from. It's basically a, a home gym that you can store in any size house or apartment. It does go under your bed and you can do over 300 exercises with it. Wow. You can get this home gym for less than $200. And the other really cool part about this that I, I wanted to stress for people is the training that's available with it. I'm kind of going with the Peloton model and I've got a lot of really awesome trainers signed up to host weekly Zoom training sessions to do recorded live content. And all of this is going to be available for free for anyone who buys a Rex. And not everyone can afford the $1,500 Peloton in their living room. I think it might be even more. Yeah. So this this is a a home gym and a, a home exercise system that's available for everyone. No matter how big your house is, whether you have space for it or not, everyone can afford $200 to stay at home and, and stay in shape. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the show so far. Wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, starting with Rewebbed. They are the best digital marketing agency on the planet. I love working with those guys. Founded by a guy named Ian Inman. He's on a mission to feed 1 billion kids and help 1 million entrepreneurs. Go check them out. Tell them I sent you. Alpha Outpost, amazing monthly subscription box sent right to your door every single month. You can start for five bucks. They send you cool stuff like this. Go use the code TOPRATEDMMA for 15% off your order. Every time that I have a guest on my show, they say that's an amazing flag. Well, this flag here and many others that I own are from a company called Combat Flags. It's a veteran-owned company. They're on a mission to donate as much money as they can to stop soldier suicide. It's an amazing organization. Go check them out, Combat Flags. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, my journey was I I wanted to get rid of the dad bod by the time I was 40 years old last year in December. And of course, I didn't do it. I said, oh, I'll do it and never got to it. Right. And then, you know, this year I started to work out on May 4th. I made it 10 days and quit. I was like, what the frick, man? So I started again May 16th. I did 90 days straight of cardio and uh, changed the the way I was eating and got down to actually, I think I even got down to 168 pounds from 199 uh, during that journey. And then I've missed two days since um, just while being on vacation on those on those two days. But other than that, man, I'm, I'm sticking with it. But any wow. any switch that flipped in your head that made you I mean, you went from quitting to now you're you know hardcore every day. Yeah, you, you, you don't miss a day. What no. changed for you? Because this is a super, you know, hot, hot topic for me, especially being in the fitness industry yeah. and trying to keep my customers motivated. And yes, we, we do launch at uh, November 1st is our launch date. Oh, gotcha. And okay. Keeping them motivated and keeping them engaged is a huge thing for me. I mean, you can give somebody an exercise equipment, but if they don't use it, it might as well be worthless. Yeah. What was it for you that kind of flipped that switch? You know, for me, it was, I don't know if it was just because I was turned 40 and I had this dad bod going and, yeah. you know, had the, had the belly going and, and I had quit so many times. And then when I said that I was finally going to do it and, and then on that 10th day, I don't know what happened. I missed the workout. I was so pissed at myself uh, that I missed that thing. And I was like, dude, I'm not doing it anymore. And I, I told my wife, and my kids, I'm like, look, I'm eating different for the next 90 days. I'm, I'm getting rid of this bod and we're going to get in shape. And so I think what really drove me was my health being 40 years old. I wanted to be in better shape. And so I said, all right, by the time I'm turning 41 in December of this year, I want to be the most ripped 41 year old guy that I know. So I started just eating healthy, taking some, you know, protein and, and just really watch what I was eating and then making sure that I did what I was committing myself to. Right. So I think I was not going to break my promise anymore. I wasn't going to, you know, break whatever I said I was going to commit to. And so that's where I'm at right now, man. And that's what really kept me going. Yeah, I love it. You just had enough and then you created some accountability by telling your your family, yeah. telling yourself, this is it, you know, I, I'm going to make this change and you did. So yeah. not everyone's able to do that. So much respect to you. Thank you. Yeah. And for me, I mean, I'm up at 4 a.m. six days a week. So as soon as I get up at 4 a.m., man, I'm, I, we have kind of built our home gym downstairs. So I, I hit the gym up downstairs and the free weights and get on the elliptical and, and do that every single day. And that's kind of what, you know, I wake up and that's kind of a non-negotiable for me, man. 4 a.m., boom downstairs you know straight to the gym so it's been it's been helpful dude oh, that's awesome i'm 6 a.m right across the street is my gym oh but nice okay. like a religion every day i'm there yeah. and my day's my day's not quite right if i don't do that yep yep totally you know it, speaking of kind of personal development stuff what are the the tools that, that you've used to grow in your personal development 
So for me, the biggest thing when I really made my biggest personal development changes was surrounding myself with the right environment for me to kind of biohack myself and the right people and the right content. So whether it be there's podcasts that I really like and I listen to every morning, the mindset mentor is one that I I recommend a friend uh, by a friend named Rob. He's a, he's a a brilliant speaker communicator and he really gets you motivated. A couple tools that I use. Um, my Alexa right next to my bed is programmed to wake up and basically talk crap to me (laughs) for the first two minutes. It goes through like a really, you know, I'm not going to use profanity on your podcast. I'll do it on mine, but sure. yeah, she'll go through and she'll say things that I programmed her to say to me that I know are going to trigger me and to, to get up and do the right thing. Nice. Same thing at the same time every night. In the morning, it turns my lights on. At night, it'll turn my lights off at a specific time. Tell me to turn off the TV. Tell me to close my computer. I know it's going to make me have a good sleep. I know when I'm going to meditate and when I'm not going to meditate. Uh, pre-workout gets me to the gym in the morning. Uh, when it's not there, I, I might not go. And I know okay. when it's right ne- sitting right next to my bed and Alexa says, wake up, drink your pre-workout. And I wake up, take a sip. Even if I go back to sleep, even if I'm able, unable to like conquer that voice in my head, it's going to wake me up five minutes later, like a storm and say, right. you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're all hyped up on caffeine. You're going to the gym. <laughs> but really, you know, I've tried everything that the gurus suggest in terms of personal development. I've taken Epsom salt baths, not a fan. I don't like baths and never stuck with me. Yeah. I've meditated in the morning and the night. I, can't seem to meditate in the morning, but at night really helps me wind down, stay focused. I love journaling. I've got a journal in every room of the house. Oh, nice. Yeah. The gratitude. I mean, that's such an easy thing to apply to apply to your day. All you yep. just need is a little reminder. And I use the gratitude app on my iPhone. Oh, nice. There's, there's a whole lot of tools out there you can experiment with. Some that I definitely recommend are the apps like gratitude, which I use. Getting Alexa in your room to just kind of, if you can pre-program your life around what you plan to do, and figure out what your triggers are, that helps you really make and solidify those changes. Cause it's hard to, to take up a new habit and turn it into a habit. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I had a guy on my show recently talk about, look, if you got these bad habits, you have to learn how to replace those bad habits with good habits and, and move them out of the way, man. And just keep figuring out what, you know, which bad habits you need to get out and replace them with the good ones. So yeah, that's, that's killer, man. Yeah, it's an ongoing battle and it's really just figuring out what's right for you and what works for you. Everybody is different. I've talked to a million people about personal development yeah. and habit forming. I've read all the books. I've listened to all the gurus. <laughs> they yeah. all have a few things in common, but there's no one's routine is exactly the same yeah. and no one's triggers are exactly the same. And I've, I've found a system that works for me. I'm very grateful for that. And when somebody comes to me and asks me, well, you know, what's going to work? What, what should I do? Say, listen, here's the habits that you should try and form into your life. Now figure out how to make yourself do them. Yep. 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 Very cool. I wanted to shift to some fun questions here to kind of end off the thing. You love to travel. I've seen photos that you posted online, but what's a favorite travel destination for you? Uh, You know, I've been to almost 40 countries at this point of my life. Yeah, I've been to a, a lot of them being in Europe, about half of them. Okay. And when you have like a favorite destination, there's a favorite destination for every different category. Yeah. I would say the best overall is Thailand just because it has so much to offer and everything's so cheap and the backpacker culture there is just exploding and fun. If you're, you know, a a young traveler on a budget, go spend some time in Thailand one to two months at least because you could travel the whole country and not see anything. Most beautiful country, Switzerland, coolest culture, Japan, best food, Japan. But yeah, world, there's so much to see in this world. And that's, you know, why, why I do what I do. I value freedom above all else. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to see as much as I possibly can, do as much as I can and be as much as I can. Nice, man. That's awesome. I heard uh, Thailand is just amazing place to go to one of these days. Hopefully we'll get there. But uh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, not right uh, now. Not right now. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a music guy. So I always have to ask this question. What's a favorite type of music or do you have a favorite band? Uh, so I grew up in Miami and yeah. my whole life I've been going to EDM music festivals. Oh, nice. So that's my genre. I don't know how much EDM you listen to or how much exposure you've had to it, Yeah. but it's just such good music. It's happy. It's uplifting. You can yep. dance to it. I pretty much play different variations of EDM no matter what I'm doing, whether it's driving in the car, at the gym, chilling in my bed, uh, eating. Yeah. I absolutely love this stuff. And if you've ever been to a music festival, yep. whether it be like Coachella, Ultra, Tomorrowland, you got to get out to one of these things. It's like stepping into another dimension. It's literally another world and it's the happiest place on earth. Yep. 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I actually use EDM when I'm studying for things. So it just helps me zone in when I'm trying to, you know, study for a test or, you know, certification or something like that. So yeah, EDM is great, man. I love that. And the live shows, live festivals, I've been to a lot of live festivals, man. And, and absolutely just a, amazing. Last question for you. What's something that scares you? I, I hate snakes. I, I'm totally scared of snakes, but it, what's something that scares you? something like an animal like a snake or or, oh man. or heights or maybe it's just you know something that gives you fear so i would say deep ocean okay. uh that i don't know if that's an irrational fear nothing's ever happened to me in the deep ocean yeah but anytime i'm out there and like my feet touch something funny yeah that that'll do it for me <laughs> or like being out in the open ocean and i recently learned how to scuba dive to try and conquer this fear yeah but yeah being out there and like it's it's the unknown it's vast and there's creatures down there that can just, you're just so vulnerable. Yep. So that, that's that been a fear I've been trying to conquer. Okay. Scuba diving and scuba diving's how I did it. Yeah. You know, I was terrified the whole time down there. But oh, sure. Yeah, that, 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 that's one of them for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Jay, such an honor to have you on my show, man. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story and what you got going on with Otter PR and Rex, man. And, and really, truly just such an honor to have you on the show. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, it was a blast to connect with you. Thank you for having me on here. And, and you know, any anytime you want to want to shoot the stuff, I'm, I'm here Thank for you. Thank you so much for watching the show today. I so appreciate it. Please leave a comment down below. Leave us a review. Share this video. We want to get it in front of as many people as we can. I'm going to continue to bring on the best guests possible from world changers, entrepreneurs, success-minded people. We are creating visionaries here on this channel. Thank you so much for checking it out. Have an awesome day.